to The Inner Typewriter, the show with typewriters, coffee, and conversations about how to make our writing better. I'm joined by Sarah Shockley, the author of The Pain Companion. Hi. Hi Welcome. Scott. Nice to be here. And what's The Pain Companion about? The Pain Companion is a book I wrote about living with chronic pain, and it is exactly that, a companion for people who are struggling with chronic pain and how to get through each day living with it, and ways to make that easier, ways to make life easier for yourself. Thank you so much for contributing that and helping people Thank out you. with that big problem. Um, today's topic is we're talking about style and uh, you know what styles you like, what kind of styles that you aspire to have, mm -hmm. and finding your voice. So yeah. to start, you know, what are some styles that you like when you're reading other people's work? Well, I've, I'm also writing fiction now, so uh, young adult fiction, and it's magical realism. So that's one of my favorite things to, to read is, um, and I like South American writers particularly, but anybody that starts from a place of where everything seems kind of normal and, you know, there's nothing particularly magical about the world, it's the world we live in, and then something unusual occurs that it can be nothing but magical and it might be just the smallest little thing that kind of woven into the story and I love that because it's like this hint of something from some other place it's like a little distant melody coming in and then and it's not necessarily it's not a fantasy novel necessarily it's not science fiction but it's got that otherworldly magic woven into it that's my favorite story mm -hmm. um, or favorite style of, of writing and so I of things that I like to read, and so I'm trying to write in that way mm -hmm. as well. So as you're as you're writing fiction, uh, have you figured out what your your narrative voice is yet? It's sort of the the you that it's not emulating someone else. Did you have that problem at all as you started? Well, you do kind of you you know nobody really knows how to write until you start writing because I mean you read a million books, which I have. I've probably read every book out there on writing. And, um, and you sort of absorb all that, the, the thoughts about how to, to plot and how to structure things and how to not structure things and whether you're going to write from the beginning or you're going to write from the end or you, know, you get all that sort of in your head and then um, kind of just plunge in and try to find out, well, who am I as a writer and how do I write? And I think you do kind of start possibly sounding like other people because that's all you've known. And then as you're writing, I think it, it's hard to talk about what is really voice, what is a writer's voice. But And I find them different for fiction and nonfiction because I write both. But um, you find out who, what is my truth and what, who am I saying this. So when I'm writing nonfiction, I often write from first person because I'm writing about my own experiences. So I, I, write, I tend to write in a more conversational tone. So I think, how would I actually say this? Not mm -hmm. how would some announcer say it on television or how would some other author say it, but how would I say this? If I was having, if the person who's reading it was right across from me and I was telling them my story, I was telling them what I felt would be the, helpful for them, how would I say it in the best way, in the clearest way without, you know, I try to avoid but using a lot of big vocabulary words just to gum up a sentence. You know, use whatever words are natural to you. doesn't mean you have to dumb it down and simplify it like crazy, but I mean, don't add in lots of important things to make yourself feel you know better about yourself you're perfectly capable of writing without adding in uh, this sense of feeling like you have to bolster your importance or something like that and I don't mean that in an egotistical way like writers are trying to be egotistical but I think that's an insecurity that sometimes we add we try to add in this importance that it sounds more important and if you have something to say that's important enough so I think, you know, for nonfiction, writing with your conversationally, writing the way that you would uh, speak to someone is, is really uh, one really good way to connect with your reader. Now, if you're writing for academic purposes or for journals, that's a different kind of writing that has its own style. So I'm talking about um, for the general public, for the mm -hmm. general reader. And then for when we're writing fiction, um, that's, a, that's a different ball of wax because we're talking about telling a story really differently. Um, nonfiction can tell a story too, but fiction is the whole thing's a story, the whole thing's made up. So how do you write a story and make it interesting so you're writing it and yet you don't want you to be 
so important. You don't want your reader to go, oh, there's that writer saying those things again. Oh, that's her style. I can f see her style in there. You know, mm -hmm. you want your style to be unobtrusive in a sense. And yet at the same time, you want your readers to be engaged and you want them to be enthralled or whatever it is that you're trying mm -hmm. to do. Maybe you want them to be shocked. It depends on what you're writing. So, so part of it is, I think your goal or your motivation and what you're writing informs your style. I like to write things that I think of as a shamanic journey. So I think of how do I create a doorway for people to go into the story and then move through the story in such a way that they're drawn deeply into it without realizing it and something happens, their perspective shifts. Things happen and they come out the other side and they're, they feel like something's happened. They, they feel different about themselves. They see the world differently. They've had maybe a magical experience. Maybe they just enjoyed themselves. But there's a, there's a journey that they've been taken on. So I think about my voice or my style as how can I best take somebody on a journey. And I want to, maybe sometimes I might want to describe things that are um, magical, but I don't want the words in the description to be the most prominent. So you've got to find that balance of how you, how you write something that um, has a feeling to it, where you're using certain words that feel a certain way, but the words don't um, pop out and take the reader out of the experience of being where you've brought them. And that takes just practice and practice and practice. Mm -hmm. But my writing, I want to be more of a journey and more f and fun and suspenseful, but other people might want to write to inform or they might want to write to shock. So their voice and their style is going to mm -hmm. have a different feeling than mine. So I think finding that is, is a matter of developing it. Yeah. You develop it. You know, and then you, it's, have I said what I want to say? And, and have I been both fully involved in it and stepped out of the way at the same time? Mm -hmm. Which is a paradox, right. a tricky thing to right. do, but that's what Almost it takes. Yeah, kind of Buddhist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you're saying that if, if writers are really self-conscious about, you know, I need to sound like a certain, I need to sound like a certain author. Yeah. Or I need to make... I need to come off as a certain uh, writer yeah. as people are reading my book, yeah. that that can actually get in the way and bog things down. Um, you know, like let's say they're, they're constantly going to the thesaurus and you know, they're, yeah. they're trying to write at a certain literary level yeah. um, because they aspire to be a literary fiction yeah. writer. Yeah. That, that, can, that can actually cause problems in, in, in the rough draft, in the second draft? Or I think so, yeah. Should people still aspire to, to build their vocabulary and develop that voice? Well, I think so. I mean, I think you've got to figure out what kind of writer you want to be and who your audience is. Who do, who do you want to have to be reading this? Who, who, you know, what's the kind of person you want, who you're talking to? And I also think you might want to do what's natural for you. If you are somebody that naturally speaks with a with a wide vocabulary, then write that way, you know. But I wouldn't necessarily try to build one artificially because it's 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 never gonna necessarily um, sound natural while you're writing. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, keep building it as you're going. I think that's a fun thing to do. But not every sentence you have to use a different weird new word. And, yeah. and you know, when there's too many words that are not in common usage, it pops the reader out too. Mm -hmm. Once in a while you get one and that's really interesting and, and you might put it in there on purpose to have them think about it. Mm -hmm. But um, I think with a, with a thought about whether you should be um, worrying about how you sound, if you sound like another writer or not, it might be a good um, exercise to take your favorite writer and write a scene or write a chapter exactly the way they write. And you're going to find that you can't anyway, right? Because you're not them. But try I'm to... I'm not Ray Bradbury. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but try to copy their writing because it'll teach you something. And then you'll find out, well, that isn't the way I really want to write anyway. Or I would have said it like that. Or you could take a, one of their chapters and rewrite it. Hmm. You know, the way they write it. Take some of the stuff and then go off what they wrote and find out, oh, well, I'm actually a different writer. And, you know, whatever you can find to explore yourself because um, we all have our own way into writing We're, and we have to uh, write our way into our own writing. So if, if um, copying somebody at first helps you find yourself, then just do that. It probably won't be the thing that you publish, mm -hmm. you know, but you w might want to do that as a really fun exercise. Just try writing like somebody mm -hmm. and see how that feels and is it really uncomfortable and is it just giving you a terrible headache to try to write like, you know, 
somebody that isn't really natural for you to write mm -hmm. like and that will teach you a lot so about what your style is. Beware yeah. of the fake it till you make it yeah. pathway. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you're going to fake it till you make it, at least know what you're like doing. Like really fake it and really, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> for, and just have fun with it and then yeah. throw that out and, and find your way. And yeah. be, be yourself. Be yourself, yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. You're Sarah so welcome. Shockley, author of The Pain Companion. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We're joined again by my 1958 Remington Quiet Writer, uh, which, as you can see, it's not actually quiet, but, uh, you know, things were relative back then. You know you're writing yeah. when you're on that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one's going to not know that you're in the writing room when you're jamming away on this. Um, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, happy typing. And remember to follow, share, and subscribe.